welcome to lesson 6.3 in the Alice tutorial series. Uh, lesson 6.3 is simply a continuation of lesson 6.2 which got a little bit long so you won't find the challenge program for lesson 6.2 there it's in this right here. We were looking at how to do uh, nested do together statements and do in order statements. We just got done animating a ferris wheel and now we're going to be animating the horse racing game from the amusement park gallery. We're going to make a pretty cool horse racing game animation, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So let's do one more example. I've created a new world, and I've chosen a snow world just to kind of mix up the uh, scene a little bit. But I'm going to add an object, and I'm going to add an object again from the amusement park category. And this time, I want to make a racehorse game. So I'm going to add the racehorse game to my world, and I'm going to center this in the camera Maybe raise the elevation of the camera a little bit because I want to make a realistic animation where these horses are racing one another. The first thing that I need to do in order to make that scene is figure out how far a horse has to move to get to the end of the platform. I'm going to do this by adding some test code and doing a bit of trial and error. Using the object panel on the left, I'm going to take the racehorse game and expand it out so I can see each individual racehorse. Racehorse number one is going to be my, my dummy. So I'm going to drag a racehorse move command into the method window. And I want the racehorse to move forward by three meters. That'll be my test. And hit play. I can see right away we have a big problem. The horse moved the wrong way. Because of the way these horse objects were created, backwards and forwards seem to be a little bit transposed. That's easy enough to fix. I can change this forward command to backwards and then give it another test. Now when I hit play, the horse will move forward three meters. That's not quite as far as I want the horses to go. So let's go ahead and try it with four meters. And if four isn't on your list, just select other, use that calculator keypad and select four. And now we're going to hit play. That looks about right for horse number one. So we're in a good spot there. Let's go ahead and try this with racehorse number two, move backwards four meters, and racehorse number three, move backwards four meters, just to make sure that it works for all of the horses. So far, so good. What I've done is I've established how far the horses have to move. When I do my animation, I'm not just gonna have the horses move in a smooth, smooth line. If you've ever seen these things at the carnival, they, they move two or three steps, and then they stop, and then they move a step, and they stop. It, it's kind of a herky-jerky motion, and it's not just a smooth horse race. I'm going to be using a series of different move commands, and what my ultimate goal is, is the horse is going to, the winning horse will move forward four meters, and during that same time, the other horses are going to move forward maybe three and a half meters, maybe three meters, but they're not gonna quite make it to the end. Now that I know four meters is, is my goal, I'm gonna delete my test code. Using the comment button here on the bottom right, I'm gonna write myself a note here. Say, this race is four meters long. Now I know when I create my, the animations for my horses that all of the winning horse has to have a total movement of four meters. With an animation such as this, it's a good idea to get in the habit of storyboarding. And what that is, is just jotting down some notes about how you want to approach this program. When I thought about how to do this program, I came up with this idea. I want all three horses to move at the same time. But while they're moving at the same time, I want them to move at different intervals. I'm going to do this by adding a do together statement, and then three do in order statements, each one representing a different horse. I'll then use comments to make sure I can keep this straight. So this is horse number one. This is going to re represent horse number two. And finally, this is going to re represent horse number three. There we go. And I've already decided that I want horse number one to be my winner. So horse number one is gonna be the horse that moves the full four meters. I also know up at the top that 
I've decided this race is going to take a total of 10 seconds. I'm going to add that to my comments so that I don't forget this. So select other and adjust this. The race time is 10 seconds. This will become important in a minute because what we're going to do is stack some commands together in do in order, moving forward at different intervals over different times. But I know the winner of the horse, when all is said and done, will have moved 4 meters in 10 seconds. Right out of the gate, I don't want the horse to move, so before the, or once the race starts, I'm going to have the horse wait for one second. Then, I'll have racehorse number one move, remember we're using backwards, one meter, and I'm going to have that over a duration of two seconds. I now know if I add this up, that this animation will take two seconds, and the horse will move a total of one meter. And I can even test this right now. We pause for a second, and then move forward over two seconds. So we're in a good spot there. I want the horse to wait again, and I'm going to add a one second wait time. So this animation is now at four seconds. Let's have the racehorse move backwards. And this time we're going to go 1.5 meters over two seconds as well. So he should have a little bit of a faster burst this time. Our animation is now two, four, five, six seconds long, and we've moved two and a half of the four meters we need to move. Let's add one more wait command here. Our animation is now at two, four, five, six, seven seconds, and we have two and a half meters left to, or excuse me, one and a half meters left to move. So let's go ahead and move the racehorse forward. Let's go one and a half meter, 1.5 meter. Oh, that was 15 meters. Try that again, 1.5 meters, there we go. And this time we're gonna do it over duration of three seconds. If I added this correctly, I should have 10 seconds of animation. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I should have the horse moving forward four meters. One, two and a half, and four. So let's see if the animation for horse number one is working correctly by hitting play. The horse moves forward, pauses, moves forward, pause. Oh, found a bug in my program right there. So let's close this. This is a forward command, not a backwards command. So when I added that command, I forgot that I'm using backwards to move the, force for, to move the horse forward along the track. So let's change that to a backwards and hit play again. We have the horse moving forward, pausing. Now this should be the final move forward. And awesome. We have a horse that moved the entire length of the track in about 10 seconds. What I'm gonna do now is program each of the other horses to have their animation. Each one of them should have a duration of 10 seconds, but horse number two and horse number three should stop short of four meters maybe three and a quarter, maybe three and a half, but we need the race to be over after the first horse makes it to the finish line. Since you've already seen me program horse number one, I'm not gonna do this on camera. What I'm gonna do is program horse number two and horse number three and do my testing, and we'll just time lapse through it so you get an idea of how this goes, but it's kinda gonna be a boring process as some of programming is. So now you're going to see the programming of horse number two and horse number three in a time-lapse fashion.
And there you have the complete horse race animation there. You saw the programming of horse number one, whose entire block took that horse a, a total of 10 seconds to travel four meters, being the winning horse. And then you kind of saw horse number two get built there. Horse number two still moves over 10 seconds if we add all these times up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half, up to 10. We'll see that that is a 10 second animation as well, only horse number two doesn't have four meters worth of movement. We've only programmed 3.25 meters worth of movement, so he's not going to travel the winning distance in that 10 seconds and the race will be over. When we look at horse number three, the same thing is true. The animation is exactly 10 seconds, but this horse has only traveled one meter and he's not the winning horse. Now you can add a little bit of uh, style to your animation by having the horses maybe rear up a little bit before they move, by kind of turning them backwards and having them turn forward as they move forward. So you can tweak these animations and spend a lot of time making them look more realistic and being a higher quality animation. The only thing I want to do to this animation is add a reset to it so that all the horses move back to their original starting position. Let's go ahead and do that now. And actually, it just occurred to me that we didn't look at the final animation in real time, so let's hit play and look at the animation now. Later, you can add sound effects and music and things like that to your animations. But for right now, we'll just have our, our silent horse race. The last thing that I want to do is reset all the horses back to their original position. To do that, I'm going to add another do together loop at the bottom. So you'll see there's a break here. So all of the entire race block of code, which is all this stuff right here that you see on the screen, is going to execute. Once that's done, because Alice defaults to a do and order statement, this next do together statement will execute. So I'll add a comment that this resets the horses to their original positions. To do that, I'm going to have to take racehorse number one and move racehorse number one forwards by a certain number of meters, and racehorse number one traveled four meters. So to get racehorse number one back to the original starting position, they're going to have to move four meters. When we look at racehorse number two again, I can see that the racehorse number two moved two and a half, three, three point two five meters. So to reset that horse, we're going to have to move him forward 3.25 meters. So let's move racehorse number two forward by 3.25 meters. Finally, when I check horse number three, horse three was only able to move three meters during the race. So we'll take horse number three and move forward by three meters. The reset animation is going to take a total of two and a half seconds. So I'm going to select other for duration and tell Alice that the duration for this animation should be two and a half seconds. I'll repeat that for each of my objects. I also want the animation to pause a little bit at the end of the race before it resets. So between my do together statements, I'm going to add one final wait command and have the animation wait for three and a half seconds before resetting. Let's see how this looks when we hit play. We haven't adjusted our race code, so this race should execute the exact same way. Now that the race is over, we're going to pause for three and a half seconds, and the horses should all reset back to their original position. Now that we have that animation done, let's go ahead and set up the Lesson 6.2 Challenge Program, which is going to have you animate the carousel object from the amusement park gallery. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is the Lesson 6.3 Challenge Program. It's the animation of the carousel object from the amusement park gallery in Alice. 
We haven't done loops yet, so I don't think you really need to focus on making sure it goes around and around forever. Your goal is to make one smooth, good-looking animation, one full revolution of this carousel. And to do that, you'll have to make one... You'll, you'll have the carousel itself rotate once, but then each individual horse will have to be animated. I found that moving the horses up and down by about half a meter looks right, so if they start in the up position, you'll start by moving them down, and vice versa. The setting that this is on right now is one revolution every 16 seconds, and the horses move up and down for two seconds each. So each complete cycle of the horse moving up and down back to its original position takes four seconds. Again, you don't necessarily have to worry about loops just yet. All you need to do is focus on getting one good turn of the carousel with the horses animating realistically. To do this, you are going to have to have nested do together and nested uh, do in order statements. So work on getting a good animation here as always, if you have any questions, something's not working for you, or you need any advice on how to proceed, leave those in the comments and I will certainly help you out. Until the next lesson, thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series, and have a great day.